Guys, we've got some great news regarding potential college football name image likeness crackdowns. And, you know, we got some programs that are just so out of control, like Texas A&M, like Tennessee. These programs just throwing money at kids, throwing money at a recruit just because he's a five-star. This is not what NLI was supposed to be. And you can see this late latest tweet, news, college leaders plan a crackdown on NLI collectives, sources tell Sports Illustrative now. Officials are exploring guidelines that reinforce that boosters are prohibited from recruiting. Schools not monitoring donors will be sanctioned for violating existing bylaws. So this is, if this actually gets enforced, it is phenomenal, phenomenal news. Now, technically, there are going to be still some workarounds, but the whole idea of name image likeness it was never to bring boosters paying for a kid just because he's a five-star. The whole idea of it was once the kid got on a college campus, once the kid went to you know, the place he thinks he can best be developed into a future NFL first-round pick, then the name image likeness deals come. What's going on right now, because there's no regulation, it is completely loose, it's completely wild. There's There are laws against it, but they're not going to be enforced. And programs like Texas A&M, Texas, Tennessee, these programs all know they can get away with doing whatever they want right now. And this tweet says... They're looking to put a stop to it. The name, image, likeness stuff, it can happen. But this whole idea where you see a five-star receiver going to a school just because he got paid $3 million, you see a five-star quarterback who's a top 10 player in the 2023 class committing to Tennessee just because he got an $8 million deal, it needs to stop. Kids need to... Look at the big picture, and name image likeness can be a part of that big picture. Like, if you want to commit to a school because you think the name image likeness opportunities in Knoxville, Tennessee are better than in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, that is perfectly fine. But this whole idea where with these boosters bookering deals because you're a five-star quarterback, because you're a top 10 quarterback, we will give you a cent amount of money just by coming, just by committing and being at Tennessee. We saw it with Texas A&M last year when they had the best recruiting class in college football history. They had eight, eight top 100 defensive linemen commit. Do you really think though all of those eight uh, you know, defensive linemen that were ranked within the top 100, you really think all of those guys thought that Texas they could be best developed at Texas A&M with the depth chart situation they're going to have? You really think that? No, they just got paid the most by Texas A&M. So this idea where they're going to start cracking down on it, schools could get sanctioned, maybe we get the Texas A&M bull band. Oh, it would be so great for college football. If Texas A&M got bull banned, for four or five years. All I want is four or five years. It would be amazing and you'd have all the... But then with, with the way college football is, you'd have all these kids going to the transfer portal now, which is a whole nother thing. And they're trying to clean up the transfer portal a little bit by making, you know, only specific times you can go to the transfer portal and, you know, go to a different team. But still, the transfer portal is going to be so crazy if you're allowing immediate transfers You've got a five-star kid who's maybe not starting his sophomore year. He's pissed. He knows he can go to another school and start there. But this is, you know, at least this is a step in the right direction to where we can really get, with the name, image, likeness, you want the kids going to where they think they're going to be developed the best. And when they get there, you can take advantage of the name, image, likeness opportunities that present themselves at Tennessee, Texas A&M. Ohio State, Alabama, anywhere you want to go, but this idea where we pay kids just to commit to certain schools, it's actually going to hurt their the kids' futures significantly because they're making decisions based off of the here and now. And Texas A&M is offering me 600K and Alabama's only offering me 100K or they're not offering me anything at all. I'm going to go to Texas A&M because I can make 600K when in reality it's a multi-year NLI deal. Half of these kids are going to be hitting the transfer portal. They're never going to see half of that money. The way they structure these NLI deals is it's a multi-year deal. 
because the boosters don't want to be screwed out of money and it's so easy for these kids to transfer and start at another school with the transfer portal. So they're multi-year deals. It's like you get X amount this year, you, X amount your freshman year, X amount your sophomore year, X amount your junior year. And if you transfer out during your freshman year, you don't get any money you know, for the sophomore and junior year, if you transfer out of whatever school is brokering or whatever school's boosters are brokering the deal with you. And again, guys, the sense around college football right now, there's two sides to it. There's the one side that's saying, listen, you can, we're not going to just give you money to commit to the school. You need to, you, you can take advantage of the NLI opportunities when you get here. But if you're going to commit to our school, it's not going to be because we threw you 600K. Those schools are Clemson, and, and this is rumored, Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, except for transfers, Alabama ki gives kids m transfers money. They gave Eli Ricks a million dollars. But when it comes to commits, Alabama does not, they don't want to pay the kids out of pocket just to commit to Alabama. Schools like that are, you know, have that philosophy, and then schools like Texas, Texas A&M, Tennessee, Florida, the desperate schools are offering kids and saying, listen, you know, like Tennessee does with the five-star quarterback, we will give you a multi-year NLI deal worth up to $8 million to come to our school, just to come to our school. You don't need a sponsorship. You don't need to just come to our school, commit to Tennessee, be here for three years. You will make this money if you sign right here, if you agree to this. That's what's going on and that's what we're trying to stop. So there's two camps. Some schools are on one side. Some schools are on the other side. The schools like Ohio State, Alabama, and Clemson think it's going to kill their culture if they're giving new recruits a million dollars. They think it's going to really hurt their locker room culture. But that's what's going on there. Another quick thing on the Jordan Addison thing. So the Jordan Addison thing is completely different than you know, NLI, you know, then in terms of like giving recruits money because Jordan Addison is already, you know, uh, being mocked in the first round. He was voted best receiver in college football last year. He, guys, the thing with the thing with Jordan Addison being the best receiver last year, he wasn't. The problem was Garrett Wilson was better, but Ohio State had multiple receivers. They had Jackson Smith, the Jigba. They had... Chris Alave, so Garrett Wilson didn't have the overall numbers that Jordan Addison did. Make no mistake about it, Garrett Garrett Wilson was the best receiver in college football last year. Okay, but no, Jordan Addison was really good. I just keep hearing people saying, oh, he's the best receiver. No, he wasn't. He was a good receiver. He played in an offense where he got a lot more targets than Garrett Wilson did, uh, and that's why. But the thing with Jordan Addison really quickly... So he's officially hit the transfer portal, and now people are saying maybe he's not a lock to USC. If USC actually offered him the rumored money that he has been offered, which is $3 million and a beachfront home, I don't see a team coming anywhere close to matching it because Jordan Addison is a one and done. He's going to be a junior next year. It's his third year in college, meaning he can go off to the NFL after next year. Really doesn't make my like three million dollars is a crazy offer for a five star receiver that you're going to get for three years. But again, none of this is we we really don't know what these kids are worth. They're worth whatever the market's willing to pay for them. But I'm just saying, I think if that offer is serious from USC, if you're Jordan Addison, yeah, go to the transfer portal, see if you can get any other better deals from an Alabama, although they already got a transfer receiver. Maybe they want another one. We know that they are in need of receivers. You've got Texas also interested. I know he, Jordan Addison has a relationship with their wide receiver coach. So if you're Jordan Addison, you got all your options open. This is a capitalist market. Go to whoever pays you the most. I believe if that offer is legitimate, where they're offering him north of $3 million and then a beachfront home to go to USC, I think that's going to be very tough for any of the boosters at any of the other schools to pony up. And really, I think many of the other schools, if you're a booster, if I'm a college football coach and like of Texas or of you know Alabama or any of these schools, I would be telling the boosters, listen, use that three million dollars to go get us two or three five star recruits that are going to be here for three years. You know, that's what I would say. So I think the three million dollar offer, if it is 
the correct number, the correct sum. Very tough to beat. And Jordan Addison going into the transfer portal. He's smart. He knows this is a capitalist market. He's keeping all of his options open. He wants teams to bid against themselves and maybe he can get the best deal possible. But if that rumored offer is legitimate, I see USC being extremely hard to beat. And, you know, there was also a report that Jordan Addison entered the transfer portal for, like, better opportunities to prepare himself for the NFL. I mean, come on. You are already going to be a first-round pick at Pittsburgh. You want money. We understand it. That's the day and age with name, image, likeness. Uh, the, the key to the key now, if the NCAA can tackle this first issue of paying the recruits just to come to your school, if the NCAA tackles that and bans boosters from offering kids money to commit to schools, the next issue could be this Jordan Addison situation where you've got a star receiver who's one of the best receivers in, receivers in college football. He's being mocked in the first round in all 2023 drafts. And, you know, he ends up transferring from the smaller school to a bigger school because of NLI opportunities. What is the smaller school supposed to do? They're screwed. They're completely... So it's like, how do you fix that? That's a whole nother thing. That's a whole different side of it. Because you've got the recruits who are committing to schools due to money. And then you've got this unique situation with Jordan Addison where, you know, this isn't like Jordan Addison wasn't going to start at Pittsburgh. Like... He's just transferring because he wants money, you know, and, and honestly, is it a better situation for the NFL? I mean, it's debatable with USC. Lincoln Riley, they do have a great offense. You know, there's been first round picks that have been produced within that offense, CD Lamb uh, and, and players like that. So overall, we'll have to see what happens if you're, you know, it's a very easy decision if you're Jordan Addison. You've got $3 million and you, you can go live in California. You get a free house. Are you kidding me? I would, anyone would do that. But it, it is a scummy thing in terms of if you're the University of Pittsburgh, you know, Jordan Addison was a mid four star recruit. You get him, you develop him correctly. You're going to get such great notoriety next year when he's playing well, when he goes in the first round of the draft. All of that goes up in smoke now due to the name image likeness, and I don't know the ex I don't I don't know how you solve something like that at this point with the way name image likeness is, where a kid's already had success in college, but he wants more money, and he's at a small school, so the small school ends up getting screwed by no fault of their own. I mean, Pittsburgh, they got a transfer quarterback, Slovis, from USC. He should be decent. It's not like they're going to have a terrible offense next year. It's not like they're replacing Kenny Pickett with some three-star quarterback. This is just a really unfortunate situation. You've got a guy like Jordan Addison in, you know, with where college football is right now, he's looking at his opportunities and he's saying, listen, I, you know, I can get money. I can go play in a better offense. I'm just going to leave. I mean, nothing against Pittsburgh. I, you know, no ill will, but... It is what it is. He wants better opportunities. He wants more money. That's the day and age we live in. But guys, this recent report we got, I really hope they start cracking down on this. The two schools that are completely out of control are Tennessee and Texas A&M. Completely out of control. And I'm sure there's other ones, but those two schools, it's gotten so bad they can't hide it. They're just offering kids, you know, Texas A&M, they were like, they spent $25 million on their 2022 class. That's a low estimate. That is a low estimate on how much money Texas A&M spent. I mean, you take a look at their defensive line class, you would think by the fifth top 100 player, these kids would be like, yeah, maybe I'm not going to get much playing time with all of these you know, defensive linemen that are studs in my class. But it doesn't matter because they want money. That's all they want. And the kid's like, well, they're offering me 600 k I'm going to go to the place where I make the most money. And like I was saying yesterday, it's going to hinder the kid's development because you're asking 16-year-old kids to make a life-changing decision at the age of 16. You know how hard that is? Every single one of us would say, I'm going to take the more money. I'm going to bet on myself. I don't care about development. I can develop myself. I have enough God-given talent. That's how these kids think. They want the money now, and it's actually hurting. The name image likeness could hurt many of these kids in the future because they're making decisions based off of money now when you could get developed into a second or a first round pick and get a four-year deal in the NFL that you can use to get a massive second or second contract after your rookie deal like so many of these pass rushers do, like so many of pretty much every position in the NFL does, you get the rookie contract, and then if you play really well, you get a really, really nice payday 
for your second contract. So, guys, a lot of stuff with NLI. I hope they crack down on it. I think the NCAA knows it's gotten to the point where it's ridiculous. This is and we, we the thing is we saw it coming with no regulation these schools a school like Tennessee who is desperate for talent they're going to say you know what if a school like Ohio State if a school like Clemson if they're not going to pay these kids we will and we'll take the kids we will take them we need talent we're desperate Texas A&M these are desperate schools they're desperate for victories and they have boosters who have the money and they want to feel involved and when a booster offers a kid a million dollars and he gets him to commit that's the booster feels good he doesn't care about the money he's got they're multi-millionaires they don't care they get a five star to, to commit to their alma mater to potentially turn around their alma mater they love it so there's a big issue right now hopefully it all gets solved guys make sure you're following me on twitter link to that's always in the description I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.